Hey guys, I'm Chris. Hey everybody, I'm Robert. And we're the Film Flamers. And it's July. It's oppressively hot in Texas. Especially here in the Nook. That's right. Well, right now it's it's cool. Yeah, but we're preheating. That's right. We are we are preheating. Texas is only preheating right now. <laughs> And like the heat index was like 150. Yeah, or we're something like five today. days straight of over 100, and it's not even July yet. Yeah. Wow. God, August is going to suck. I'm going to live in your pool. I don't know. You never know what happens. Yeah. The weather can change very fast here. Yeah. It's going to get hotter politically. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's time to shoot the flames, y'all. Yeah, it is. <laughs> That's right. As we melt away. But we have a lot of comments and questions and stuff to talk about. So. Uh, Let's start by saying that we don't have any new reviews. We don't. We really could use those because it's been a little bit. Yeah. I mean, we've gotten some things on like Instagram and like DMs that I would count as reviews, you mm-hmm. know? Yeah. But um, <clears throat> we haven't had a lot over on Apple or iTunes for a while. Yeah. They need to change it over to Spotify or something. Uh, yeah, It's wish. harder to write anything on Spotify, but there's still a rating there. But I don't know until everyone else starts like changing the way the industry has gone, which is towards Spotify. But if you have the time and the patience and the means, if you can send us a rating and review over on Apple podcast or iTunes, that would actually help us out on our triumphant and courageous epic journey towards Rotten Tomatoes reviewership. I was trying to think of a word to say that we would be reviewership is good. Also, <clears throat> once we're there, hopefully I want to join the Dallas and Fort Worth Film Critics Association. But we can't. Why? Because you have to have a printed publication. They're they're ancient. Doesn't the internet count as printed? No. <laughs> That's silly. I'm going to look into this. Yeah. yeah. Just because I want to do it. Yeah. What are we even talking about? I don't know. <laughs> oh, we have a podcast. We're not just talking to each other. <laughs> right. We didn't get any reviews. Uh, <laughs> For shame. From our, from our deep dive into um, <laughs> apt pupil... David Raymond Clark from Instagram said, hey, y'all, love both episodes on Sir Ian McKellen. I remember the first time I saw him was in Michael Mann's The Keep and later on episodes of Royal Shakespeare Company's playing Shakespeare with Judy Dench and Patrick Stewart. Good stuff. Deke. <laughs> I like how he's ending all of his comments with Deke. David Raymond Clark, you may be the only person who appreciates that except for us. I really? I thought other people did, too. Or has it always been him? I think it's just been him because he had multiple comments last month and he ended all of them with like, Deek. <laughs> <laughs> and every time it pops up, it just makes me fucking guffaw with laughter. Yeah. I love it. And that's what's important. Hashtag Exile Texan over on Patreon said, congratulations on the new Kitten Overlords. Well, thank you. And the Kitten Overlords are Devon Rex kittens by the name of Simba and Ula. That's right. And they are just so fucking cute. I mean, originally it was going to be Yzma and Kronk, but I didn't want that kind of package. I still call them thoughts and prayers. Well, it was going to be Ghost in the Darkness because of their nighttime escapades. Mm -hmm. They have many names. Yes. Their names are Legion. (laughs) Yeah. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. Bennett over on Patreon said, I've read the novella the film is based on, and I've been meaning to watch it someday. It's just so hard to make myself watch it when I'm so addicted to Drag Race. Why would I want to pull myself away from countless seasons of Fabulous Queens to watch that disturbing shit? One of these days, I'll finally suck it up and just do it. If only so I can listen to you queens and break it all down. I love Drag Race. I'm also addicted to Drag Race. I've but I find time to watch full episode. Things. I know you haven't, but you've seen clips. I've seen plenty of clips. I yeah. like the the game, the Snatch game. Mm-hmm. I feel, I mean, like, you're just getting through, like, some of the talky bullshit and getting to, like, runways and I don't care things. about reality TV. I just never have. It's not for me. I mean, I just I like, like escapism. I just, I mean, I'm escaping the Drag Race. Subjective. Yes, it is. Very much. But, I, uh, Bennett, I also love Drag Race. So. Yeah. But I watched After People, and he did too, <clears throat> because on Patreon, he continued by saying, update, finally watched it, and maybe not scary in the traditional sense, but definitely disturbing. Here are some takes. As far as the homoeroticism, homosexuality themes go, how did you both miss the obvious interaction between both main characters, where Brad Renfro tells Ian McKellen to go fuck himself, only to have McKellen answer, boy, don't you know, we're both fucking each other. Oof. Turn my stomach, especially knowing the director's reputation. Yeah, I noticed that. Yeah. I just didn't want to talk about it. <laughs> yeah. I feel like we talked about that. And, uh, we, we, we talked around it, for sure. A yeah. lot around it. But. We did. 
He also says kudos for noticing Anne Dowd, who does look very young in this. However, you forgot to mention her true star turn as Aunt Lydia in The Handmaid's Tale. I remember seeing her as the mom in this and going, that boy's not the only future psycho in that household. I haven't seen it. Yeah, I didn't forget to mention it because I have not seen The Handmaid's Tale. (laughs) The only two queers on this planet that have not, apparently. I'm just waiting for it to be completely done. Oh, yeah. Is it? I don't know. I have no idea. No idea. Yeah. We didn't forget Lastly, I met Brian Singer in person at a screening and Q&A of The Usual Suspects my first semester in college. Definitely a highlight and long before I knew about his infamous reputation. What was more disturbing to me in hindsight was how many straight guys I knew in film school who half-jokingly said they'd be willing to do sexual favors for him if it meant getting ahead. Because, you know, he's Brian Singer. Jesus. Well, joke's on them. He doesn't like college-age boys. <laughs> Don't see what's Allegedly. Brian. <laughs> Don't see what's Brian Singer. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> Thank you for adding that caveat. Nicole over on Patreon said, Rage is the Stephen King story you were trying to think of. Yes. And I agree 100%. Love this collection, but App Pupil just left me cold. I think you're onto something with that lack of protagonist theory. Thank you. Also, I was kind of industry adjacent in the early 2000s and had many friends working their way up the ladder as PAs, production assistants, etc. Singer and Spacey specifically had dozens of rumors both on set and off surrounding predatory behavior. It was that whole, quote, they make money, so sweep it under the rug, unquote, thing that Hollywood and much of corporate America really is so good at. That said, the work of problematic people is not something I actively seek out, but I don't shun it all either, which feels conflicting. I think it comes down to how passionate I was about the art in the first place. Singer, Spacey, whatever, good riddance. But Michael Jackson will send me into a tailspin of yelling, how dare you at my inner music nerd. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, I feel like this is super subjective and everyone's going to have their own decision and thought process for problematic people and their art, especially when, you know, you don't want to invest in that. You don't want to give throw more money at that. But to our point, you know, when there's hundreds or thousands of people working on something or even when the original work doesn't belong to them, you know, like yeah. in this case, Stephen King, you know, it's like I feel like it's OK to watch it and critique it and uh, glean for whatever is important in that story. Well, I also think it's important, like we did in that episode, is to talk about the reasons why people might not be watching this movie. We're still shedding a light on some possible wrongdoing or questionable behavior on someone's part. Nicole, though, I would love to sit down and listen to some of your stories about your industry adjacent like work during that time period, especially if you like know some things like this or heard rumors and whatnot. This is why we need a meetup time. Like, really, guys, come to New Orleans for the Overlook Film Festival so we can all sit down and talk. Yeah. Rosie Red Leader on Patreon said, in answer to your question about whether or not to talk about controversial films or making of the films, please continue to do so. We have so much to learn from the past, the good and the bad, and it's important to learn where we've come from. I also appreciate learning about films such as this and more of a synopsis conversation as opposed to me sitting down by myself unprepared to watch. Having a conversation about a controversial topic does not mean that you feel one way or the other about it or are promoting it, but rather gives the opportunity to learn and to grow and an understanding of what was happening in the world at the time and influencing media. The more you know, and that's education. That really is. The more you know. <laughs> Deek. <Dun, dun>, <laughs> Deek. <laughs> well said, Rosie. Yes. I mean, and that's that's the point that we're, we were getting at, you know. And after we recorded that episode on Act People, I think Chris and I both walked away from it thinking that we spent way too much time talking about Brian Singer and his, like, shenanigans – But um, I feel like people other than like Nicole and Rosie have said things about that. It was not as long or not as in depth as maybe we had thought. Right. So I don't know. We'll, We'll continue to watch movies and talk about them by people who have some sort of questionable behavior because because there's movies, a lot of people made them and there's, they are still around. So well, apparently a lot of people remember this movie because like I've looked, been looking at our stats and it seems like it's kind of going gangbusters, kind of like how ghost in the darkness did unexpectedly. You know our people. I mean? Yeah. I'm shocked by that actually. Versus gods and monsters is almost nothing, oh. which is the next deep dive we're talking about. Cause we only got two comments. That's right. So Nicole over on Patreon said the good liar is so good. Listen to your mother. 
We caught it randomly one night on cable during the COVID shutdowns and got hooked. I just watched it. That's right. I did. I actually did something I said I was going to do. On the box. I saw it on Letterboxd and I was like, oh, he did it. I was like, he I'm going to watch thing. something on my list. And I was like, the patrons were telling me to see it. And then my mom was telling me to see it. And we just watched Ian McKellen and we're talking about Helen Mirren. And yeah, it was great. Good. All right. I need to watch it for yeah. sure. Would you recommend it? Yeah. I think I think you'd like it. Yeah. The end is a little, you know, revealing, you know. It's like one of those situations where it's like a 30 minute explanation of this is what was actually happening. Oh, Lord. But is it done clue style? Do I laugh? Uh, no, okay. it's not even done six, six, sixth sense style, mm. okay. you know, which like if, if you don't understand what's what's coming, if you're not trying to guess and like figure it out and you don't under, actually figure it out before, it might be enjoyable. But most of the time I figure these things out. That's how my brain works. Yeah. And then when they spend 30 minutes explaining something I already know, it's a little frustrating. And half the time with movies that are like mystery movies or whatever, I lose interest half the way through and I don't really care by the end. Like, who It's not. It it's not. It's like it's one of those where it's like it's not a mystery. Everything's very in your face. But then you, there's a recontextualization. You know what oh, I mean? Okay. All right. So. Well, proving our point as to what we just said about this movie, maybe not being such a popular deep dive episode, Battle Burrito over on Patreon said, I had so many mixed feelings about this movie. I don't know. I like Gods and Monsters. Yeah, I think it's important. Yeah. We did a pride thing. Yeah, we did. <laughs> yes, we did. We did. We're proud of it. <laughs> From our Shooting the Flames episode back in June, Bennett over on Patreon said, You tired queens covered a good amount in this episode, and I feel the need to comment on a couple of things. First... Like Robert, I too feel guilty that I missed seeing Dune in the theater. Amen. It was still a time when theaters were requiring masks, and I just didn't feel the urge to sit down for almost three hours like that for even a masterwork like this. But you'll both be happy to know the only movie I saw in a theater that year was The Green Knight, or as my friend calls it, Knights of the Round Table on Acid. Well, I'm happy that you saw The Green Knight. I did not see it in the theater. I did see Dune in the theater. Mm -hmm. um, although the mask thing didn't really bother me as much because as soon as you have popcorn or drink, you're taking your mask off anyway. You know what I mean? It was dark in there. Yeah. Like, who cares? Like, you know. Does that make it sound like bad pandy people? I No. I mean, I tried to keep my mask on, but if I was eating and drinking, it's like, fuck it. You, you, I'm not going to not have popcorn and soda That's true. if I'm going to the theater, you know? True. True that. A movie without popcorn is like a day without sunshine. <laughs> We have to have popcorn and candy. Sometimes Speaking of pickle. sunshine, we have a comment about that later on. Oh my God, really? Uh, yeah, deep cut. Second, Chris doesn't like Jesse Eisenberg. I've always found him adorable, even when he's playing asshole billionaires. Also, check out an indie thriller called Night Moves, where he plays an eco-terrorist and takes his shirt off in one scene. I have to ask, are you sure you didn't mean Ben Shapiro? Because I like to call him evil Jesse Eisenberg. <laughs> Fuck both of them. I don't fucking care. Like, Ben Shapiro is going to hell anyway. Uh, Jesse Eisenberg... He annoys the shit out of me. I, I can't stand it. I don't think I want to see him take his shirt off. Me either. Like, I don't know I, that I would really be into the, that. the twinkiest, the twinkiest of twinks, which is Jesse Eisenberg. Yeah, he is super twinky. I'd be like, if you took his shirt off in a movie and I got to see it like for an extended period of time, and half with like a strong breeze or something. I, I just want to give him a sandwich. <laughs> you know, like you need to eat something, Jesse. Come sit next to me. You want Celine Dion? Share a meal. <laughs> <laughs> that sandwich will go on allegedly, <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> this is the episode where we don't get sued for slander right <laughs> from our shooting the flames in may nikki over on patreon said i can't wait for the x-files list one of my favorite episodes is arcadia i absolutely love Mulder, and the moment he said woman get back in here and make me a sandwich i died I love that episode too. And it's a very tongue in cheek episode. Well, we've, we've put it on the docket in October. We're thinking about doing 13 ghosts and the 13th warrior. Uh, and then maybe as a top 10, uh, we can do a possible because we, we like to do anthologies. Uh -huh. So why not do a top, I don't know, 13 X-Files episodes. Oh, sure. I'm looking forward to watching these. Yeah. So I really, really am. I need to put it together so that you can start watching now ish. Yes. Cause it will take me. Those many months. Low these many months. Yes. Low those many months to finish that list. Mm -hmm. From our deep dive into Day of the Dead. Wow. Uh, Oilap78 over on Instagram said, just listen to this episode 115 weeks later. 
It has been out for a while. Absolute gore fest. But I disagree with the grossest kill being Rhodes. They pull Rickles' eyes out of his head. They pull Rhodes apart. Like, yeah, eyes is gross. You know what I mean? I don't like it when things happen to eyes. But Rhodes, they literally bisect the man. And yeah. he's screaming and like looking at his own fucking innards when they do that. Yeah, and I know the behind the scenes stories, which are gross too. Right, because it was that. making people vomit and yeah, shit. Because it was they'd gotten it and it had been rotting all day and yeah. they'd gotten it from like the the butcher. So it was real intestine. I mean, again, all subjective, but I'm standing by the comment that we made in that episode. That was the grossest kill. Like watching that every time I watch that movie, I'm like, this is fucking nasty partially because they used real gore you know like when the zombie stands up on the table and all of its guts fall out on Mm -hmm. the floor and just plop you know it's all fucking real and it looks real yeah because it's real those eyeballs were not real those innards no real yeah but i'm glad that you listened to this episode and i'm glad that you commented on it i like it when people comment on older episodes those eyeballs would have been real if it was free ken (laughs) (laughs) we would have shot a gun (laughs) Speaking of older episodes. From our deep dive into sunshine, as promised, Dr. Lion Hunter over on mm. YouTube said, enjoy the review, subscribing. By the way, if you guys are interested, I did a retrospective on sunshine, mainly focused on defending some of the aspects of the third act that you guys talked about. It thematically fits the film, but it's highly misunderstood. And so actually he didn't put a link or anything. He didn't make it easy. Um, you know, so he wasn't like super advertising. So I did click on it and I listened to it as I was like kind of putting this doc together a little bit. And yeah. I want to say that like, the first half of it is actually talking about the movie itself. He doesn't give himself a lot of credit. Uh, he only starts talking about that ending thing around the halfway mark. And it's like a good 16 minute video. And it's the only video that he's ever released, but he's actually like a doctor of behavioral science for <sighs> people that go into space. Really? Yes. Oh my and God. He made this one video. I don't know if it was like for some sort of like project for his like a school or for students or, or just because of interest. But he did it and he put together his clips and music and everything from Sunshine and it's a video. Um, you know, so I don't know. I might I might put together um, some of the links, like the, the Atlantic article that Kimberly sent us. Yeah. Is that Kimberly or Nicole? Nicole. That Nicole sent us. And uh, maybe this one so people can watch um, Dr. Lion Hunter's um, video on uh, his take on Sunshine as a behavioral scientist for people who go into space. Oh my God, that's so interesting. Because he thought it was very, very good. He's like, the science is like, muddy obviously on like the actual disaster piece of it right but like it's a very very good um like expose or um documentary almost uh, into like it's a very good example uh, or a good piece on uh the psychology of of astronauts and stuff going up into space for a long time i love it i'm gonna watch that okay good i'm glad you subscribed please if you have further comments on episodes, like given your field of expertise, I would love to hear that. For real. And also, I, I do like the third act in that movie. Like, that's what makes it a horror movie, by and largely, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, like, that was the first time that I watched Sunshine and loved it so much. So, yeah, I'm still glad that people listen to that episode and talk about it. It's good. I still have that, like, afterglow of you saying you love that movie, so... It was good. It was so good. (laughs) We have some comments and some questions. Uh, Bear sent us an email and he said, I'm entertained by most films, but I'm never scared anymore. So now I'm on the hunt for movies for those of us that don't get scared by most films anymore. A possible list. I miss the excitement that I see others like my wife, who isn't a horror fan when they hide from the screen tucking into the seat and hiding behind their hands, even going through a haunted house walkthrough. Of course, while it may have a few jump scares, I stride through chest out eyes open wide, daring them to scare me. I do not. That's me. Yeah, it's you. I do like films such as possum or the alchemist cookbook because while on the surface, they don't scare me. I usually go back and watch it again, trying to find the lingering moments that I can simply say, Oh, that's messed up. After listening to the witch in midsummer, a film which to me is way overrated. My conclusion is that A24 films aren't stories, but character studies or profiles. For real. Usually, when I get to the end of an A24 movie, I am left unfulfilled because there is no conclusion, or when the credits roll, I'm asking the question, now what will they do? For example, at the end of Enemy, and I read the book, when he closes the door. I still haven't seen that, but I love the soundtrack to that movie. I haven't seen it either. 
Lastly, my sister Nikki has some pipes. In fact, the whole family does, and when we get together and harmonize. Even our 102, almost 103-year-old Nana Bell is still singing. Maybe we can karaoke at Overlook. Yes, count me in. <gasps> awesome. Another person for Overlook. I love it. Okay. Now, I did respond to this email, and I said, hey, I do actually have a list of private, personal, not, it's not private, but it's a personal list that I put together of films that actually scared me as an adult. Yeah. Okay. And so, like, Terrified, Alterados is, like, top of that list. Mm -hmm. And even then, that whole list isn't something that, like, I'm terrified of. You know, it's, like, moments. Maybe, like, as you get closer to 10, it's maybe mere moments where actually scared me or maybe just scared me the first time. Yeah. And I was starting to, like, like you know, get the, scrape the bottom of the bucket with the, like, number 910. You know what I mean? So, it's not a perfect list, but I did send him a list of the ones that scared me. And the thing is that, like... Most horror movies scare me at some point, you know what I mean? And I like, I may not be like hiding my face from the screen, but I do count like really tense moments and like just about every horror movie I watch, I feel that kind of way. Right. Yeah. And that sort of carries over. Even if it happens just happens just once in the movie, it carries over and I feel scared for the rest of it. Right. I get yeah. a visceral rush being scared. Going through like haunted attractions, haunted houses, like you've been with me. I've injured myself, like being so scared. So, uh, and movies like Possum, like Possum is a really fucking creepy ass movie. I have not super seen that. Up. I want to watch that and I want to watch Session Nine so I can like replace some of the things that are in the bottom of my list. But like things that are near the top, I think would have been like The Strangers, Alterados, or Terrified. Yeah. Um, the dark and the wicked. Yes. Um, very things much. that I like things with a lot of slow building dread. Mm -hmm. Dread Same. really does it for me. Um, I love that feeling. You're going to love session nine. I had Dolby shocks. Don't do it for me. No, not at all. I, I mean, like count that. they, they work, you know, they scare oh, me. Well, I'll jump. jump every once in a while, but yeah. I wouldn't say I was scared. I would say I was startled, which is not the same thing. So what you say about H24 movies, like not being horror movies, but more like character studies or profiles. I mean, like I get that too. I still think they're horror films. You know, a uh, patron and friend of mine, Alex, was watching Lamb like just this week mm -hmm. and he called it a slice of life. And he was like, I like movies like that. It's like a very short period of time in these people's lives. And that's it. It doesn't matter what's going on in the rest of the world. Lots of movies like that in all genres, yeah, you know, I know. And so, I mean, I, I do like I think the whale is something like that, you know. So, I mean, I just like movies like that. Yeah, but they still have more concise endings. Like, the whale ends with a death, you know, the death of the main character. That is versus, true. like, you know, I get what he's saying. I really do. Yeah, I mean, I completely like agree with, with the you. the witch, it's like, what's next for her? Other than, like, the thematic story of her beginning, middle, and end and the witch, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm satisfied with that. Well, to I'm me, saying. it's a perfect ending. Versus, like, for him, he's like, yeah, but it's a tragedy. And it doesn't, like, it doesn't sit well with him, maybe. You mm -hmm. know? And so I get that. It's subjective. But I completely agree with you. I think that a lot of A24 horror movies, right? Or I, I haven't, I mean, I've seen a lot of them and I've seen other like non horror A24, but they are yeah. almost all of them are like character studies. Yeah. To me, like hereditary is almost like a fuck you to the audience a little bit. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm not as big, as big of a fan of hereditary as a lot of other people. Uh, I think it's really well done and superior, superiously wonderfully acted. Yeah, Tony Collette, et cetera. Uh, but also, like, I, I would like to see what Bear's take would be on, like, something like The Mist, right? True. The ending for that. Yeah, which also needs to go. Which is also kind of like a big middle finger to the audience. It really is. This is in a different way. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, come on down to Overlook. I will certainly karaoke with you guys. Chris will do it, too, right? Yeah, of course. I'll sing The Freshman. <laughs> as a big middle finger to the audience. <laughs> when I was young, I knew everything. <laughs> <laughs> Stomping on baby's breath or whatever the fuck that song goes. The uh, shoe full of rice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nikki sent us an email and she said, clock. What an interesting <laughs> and novel concept. This should go with your crotch fruit episode. The biological clock and running out of time is terrifying to some women. So this is brilliant. Just enough jump scares and body horror. I will never look at a pendulum the same way again. Same. Loved the beginning and the end. I love Clock. I'm glad you watched so it. Good. Yeah. Yes, I'm glad you watched it very, very much. Cargo. Great story. Enough horror elements, and I appreciated the Aboriginal storyline. Oh. If this was a U.S. film, we would have ruined the simplicity of it. Took me a minute to understand the creatures burying themselves. There is a good amount of visual storytelling. For me, the faces of the monsters really freaked me out. I need to see this movie. I know. I I, I didn't even know what it was about. And like I'm getting more of a glimpse of it. And I love visual storytelling. And so I need to see it. Okay. It's on my list already. Yeah, same. I actually have a list. So 
Well, I've been trying to use Letterboxd a little bit better. Yes, that's where I keep my list, my watch list. Mm-hmm. Aliens, brown face. This thought has been running through my head for years. This is one of the my favorite movies of all time, and I adore Vasquez's character, but it doesn't sit right with me. Yes, it was during a time that we didn't talk about diversity, and I'm not saying it would be easy, but brown face is such a cop-out. I have a hard time believing that they couldn't find a Latina to play that role and shouldn't excuse it. We should be able to call it what it is, and work to do better without the excuses. Now, I agree 100% with what Nikki's saying here, but uh, when you listen to them tell the story, it's like they, whatever production company it was, the, the laws at the time, they could not hire anyone but uh, like an English English actors. They had to exhaust everyone that essentially um, uh, auditioned, which mm-hmm. was hundreds, right? And finally, they found an American living in in london that like could pull it off right and so that was the story behind that like now obviously if they had done this in if they'd done this in america james cameron is not shy of hiring you know people of color uh, etc right and so i feel like that's what would have happened but this actress has been doing lots of different like she went on to play like one of the like the irish poor folk on the titanic that that died or whatever and like she's been like a chameleon now she owns a bra shop in la and doesn't act what's her name jeanette something or other jeanette goldstein I yeah, think. yeah yeah so like she's a really great actress but it's like it's also like us like judging a time like like 1984 or whenever they were hi- like hiring for this in 1985 through the lens of 2023 you know, wrong is wrong, but I don't know. Like, um, I, I, like I said, I agree with everything Nikki said, but yeah, I mean, I completely I also, do. I also heard their story about like really struggling to to find like the appropriate actors for these people. And I also feel like in situations like this, we're learning from mistakes made in the past, right? And so, like, we we do talk about diversity and inclusion a lot more these days, and that's that's amazing. And people are being more represented on film and television and all sorts of other media. But when things like this happen, it's good to feel that way and be uneasy about it. But, I mean, at least we're trying to make strides today yeah. to change that. I don't right? understand those rules because it's like they got Sigourney Weaver in the first one, you know, and that was in a, a British production. Yeah. It was all that brandy. You know, and then they had like um, Yotes or whatever Yachts or whatever his name was. He uh, played the African-American dude on uh, the Nostromo. Uh-huh. And uh, he was awesome. And I think, I don't know if he was actually English, but he did an American accent. No, he's American. He's American. Yeah. So it's like, how do they, like, they have to prove to like the, the film commission or something of England that there is no one else to play it, but this, this role that, you know, this person that is not from England, you know? I hope to God they don't have that rule anymore. So I don't know. I, I, I don't think they do. I don't know, but now I want to watch Aliens again. And Cargo. And Clock. <laughs> <laughs> she had one for she had one more thing to say though she, she said, said i can't wait to see the highfalutin shirt <laughs> same highfalutin highfalutin i feel things to do. like a lot of people are I mean, okay guys real talk though when the shirt is ready and it gets posted we will let you guys know but we will not be able to sell it for a very long time i think why because disney will sue us oh <laughs> so we'll just tell you like immediately when it's going to come. So out. you're going to have to buy the shirt and so we can take it off before we get sued. Okay. So get it. It'll be like one of those things. We won't get sued. That'll just be like a cease and desist and like Teespring will take it off. Well, that's, I mean, okay. Allegedly. You still have to buy it fast. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> I'll just put highfalutin and then like little asterisk and say allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> TM, TM, TM. <laughs> Kimberly sent us a voicemail. Hey guys, it's Kimberly. So uh, I have a possibility of a job change that will involve um, travel to the Dallas Fort Worth area every couple of months. So naturally, I had a dream about you guys last night that we finally met in real life, uh, but you turned out to be these old, fat, hairy, crusty dudes running a gas station and doing your bod- podcast out of the back of the gas station, and you had like ZZ top beards. So um, that was weird, but, you know, whatever. Talk to you later. Bye. Well, I have thought about being a franchisee. So maybe you are maybe you actually had a premonition. Because <laughs> in 10 years, we will be old fat gays, like, uh, with ZZ Top beards. And I might have a, you know, a franchise of a gas station. 10 years? And that would make an excellent nook. <laughs>
It's not going to take 10 years. I'm pretty much there now. I'm not crusty. <laughs> <laughs> but did you say you had a job? You were going to have a job that comes to DFW? Oh, my gosh. Well, look us up. Do it. Send us a message, Kimberly. We live in DFW. But hey, if you're in town, you know, it never hurts to send a message. We can see what's going on and whatnot. Yeah. We have a new patron. Seems like patrons. Yeah. And uh, that's Alexis and Darren. Thank you guys for joining the Patreon family. We hope you enjoy all the content over there. And don't be shy to comment and send messages. We like to see that. But we have to shout out our patrons at the Film Flame or Tier or higher. And they are Kimberly at the Film Inferno level. And Penelope, who's also infernoing film. Okay. And uh, Anthony. Ashley. Ben. Glaze Donut. Jessica. Lisa. Nikki. Rosie Redleader. And William Skinner. But especially Aya. Yes. It's all about you. It's all about all of you. For reals. That's right. But especially everybody. But especially us. <laughs> So, uh, in uh, Film Flamer news, uh, apparently, if you've been commenting on Spotify, it is broken. Mm. So, I've been getting these notifications, like, once a week, twice a week, that says people are commenting on your episodes, you know, which is apparently just a question that maybe pops up for people at the end, like, uh, do you have anything to add to the discussion type of situation? And people had done it before, and we were able to read them. And so, I would go in there, and there would be nothing, nothing there. Like, it would tell me which episode, if it's an old episode, nothing. I've searched top to bottom several times, and there's no new comments. And then today, I went in there, and literally all the QAs have been removed. But it says they're automatically being added to each episode. So Spotify, I know they did, they just, like, uh, laid off about 300 people from their podcast program. Yeah. But shit's breaking, so you gotta fix it. So sorry for all of you that are maybe, I don't know, commenting on Spotify. So I think for our next episode, then I will listen on Spotify and see what happens at the end of it. Maybe I'll try to leave a comment and we can test it. Well, it would be like some, I, I don't know what it is. I, I don't know I don't if they either. click on like a Q&A or if it's like a pop-up. I wouldn't be aud- audible though. Never listened to a podcast on Spotify. Oh. So wow. maybe I'll try it. Okay. I mean, make that $10 worthwhile. Speaking of listening, have you heard ads on our podcast? No, I have not. No, I haven't either. I have not heard one ad. And you have not heard one ad, but apparently there's ads playing on our podcast on some platforms. It was brought to my attention, you know, that, yes, like the ads are being heard. And I'm like, what are they? Like, we didn't say they could do that. Yeah. So I looked it up and it was like the School of Colorado, University of Colorado or something. Yeah. And then there is like a, like a, a, another movie podcast. Another movie podcast with gay guys talking. And then there's like another, like a Dungeons and Dragons or something. And then like something else. So there's like four or five different commercials that we're playing at mm-hmm. some point. And apparently we've been opted into by our podcast host, some sort of advertising regime. And we made like 18 bucks for like four days. And now like ads have played since then. So I, I mean, cause I maybe listen. Maybe they have. I don't know. We're asking you listeners. Are you Please. hearing advertisements? Like tell us. What cause... are they? Are they embarrassing? Should we like sue allegedly? <laughs> today's episode is brought to you by the word allegedly i would love to do like actual ads that we care about but like we perform them oh my god yes but i'm not gonna just you know do it for free if we did that y'all if we like if we get to write our own script and like do our own commercials i mean like obviously we'd make it funny i don't know but yeah i I kind of don't want to have Get ads. Get struggle snuggles on a purple mattress. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> There's no other place to have surprise sex. <laughs> no. On a purple mattress that snout gel cleans right up. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> Deek. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard a fucking ad. So, and I listened to all of our episodes. So I don't know. But yeah, tell us, please. Um, also, and some news, Saw X has revealed their logo, and there's a trailer coming this summer? Theoretically. I, I cannot believe Allegedly. they're at Saw 10. Y- it's like they purposely just made that many just so they could have Saw X. Yeah, I don't... It's probably going to be a piece of shit. Has anyone watched all of these? I'm sure. Who, who are they making these for? I don't, not me. I haven't watched anything after like the, the second or third one. I watched the third and fourth ones. I haven't seen anything. There was like a that. pit of needles and I was like, nope. Oh, that's all too. Yeah, I know. 
that was terrible. Um, I thought that it was over. Like I thought they weren't doing that anymore, but apparently they are. I mean, when you have a franchise, I guess you just go on and on and on and on and on forever. But um, is anybody looking forward to this? Are you looking forward to the trailer? No. Yeah, I, I, I didn't even realize that we were past like six or something. Yeah. Also, where is the time gone? Yeah. I remember seeing the first song in the theater. Really? Yeah. As an adult. You're old. Well, a very young adult. I am very old. When did it come out? Uh, I was like 21 or 22 when that movie came out. So 1989 or? Ish. Yeah. I'm joking. 1989. Oh my God. I agree with that too. I didn't think twice. I'm like, yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> Fuck. So like 2001, 2002, somewhere yeah. in the early, yeah, thousands, yeah, yeah. early, early thousands, right? Because yes. that was like, to me, it's the vehicle of James Wan and Lee Wan L's, you know, birth into Hollywood. Yes. And the first thought was very, very good. Yeah. It has a really great recontextualization at the end. Yes. Oh, it does. You're right. Very, very good. No one saw that coming. Nope. I did not, for sure. Speaking of James Wan. Uh, yeah. Filming begins on James Wan produced Mortal Kombat 2, which I believe he produced the first one. Did mm-hmm. he direct it too? No, I think he just produced it. Yeah. I liked it. It was fine. I thought it was good. Yeah. It was dumb popcorn. Fun. And like, so in in news like i keep seeing these articles posted on facebook where they're showing these cast members that are joining right i don't know the actors but um they're showing some images from production two and it looks really really like violent i mean that movie was violent anyway but i enjoyed the shit out of that mortal Kombat movie much better than the other ones that came i forgot out. completely about it it was it was fun but it was like brain dead you know and, oh yeah yeah and I, I remember it being a little tedious with the characters. I'm like, just like show us the fucking fight scenes. I don't care about this. I think we talked about it on a hot takes episode, or maybe yeah, it was an old like shooting the flames we where we used to do hot that. takes or something like that. But yeah, I because I didn't have to think at all watching that movie. I was like, I'm just watching someone rip a spine out, and I'm okay with it. Yeah, you know, and That's I'm okay with Mortal Kombat too. Exactly, Sonya Blade or whatever is in it now. Ooh, well, she was in the first one too. Was she? I, I can't thought. remember. Yeah, no, she totally was. Okay. Sony Blade and Jax and yeah. you know, Sub-Zero and Scorpion and, and the gang. And the, and the gang. <laughs> Allegedly. And Frodo and, Frodo and Sam. And... <laughs> oh, finish him. Marion Pippin. <laughs> wow. Have you seen that t-shirt? There's like, it's two Mortal Kombat characters and one guy's on his knees like giving head to the other one and it says finish him at the top of it. Yeah. I really want it. Charlie and Lucy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> good grief <laughs> anyway uh robert eggers's nosferatu has wrapped wrapped in may actually and the cast is stacked right and so this has bill skarsgård not his brother alex which was in the northman uh bill actually was going to be in the northman too but was uh could not do it because of scheduling issues and so now he is gonna play count orlock shocker yeah after playing it That's and right. uh he was also in um uh john barbarian. Wick 4 and barbarian yeah. but he was the bad guy in uh john Wick 4 really it was There's very good he had john to do a Wick french tv series coming out really yeah well it's like from the universe i still need you to see atomic blonde and nobody that's right Mr. i still need to see the, the latest john wick movie too it's good um nicholas halt which is weird as thomas hutter which i'm guessing is kind of like the character he just played with nicholas cage yeah I don't know the one-to-ones with Bram Stoker Dracula, right? Because they they're only uh, are like Count Orlock instead of Dracula because of like the German, you know, rights. They didn't have the rights to it and they wouldn't get him. Uh-huh. And then Ellen Hutter is played by Lily Rose Depp because um, Cow Eyes couldn't do it. That's right. And, uh, or Anya Taylor-Joy to the rest of you. Uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson is in this as Friedrich Harding. I don't, I, I don't know. Emma Corrin as Anna Harding and then Willem Dafoe. As Professor Eben Eberhardt von Franz, which I'm, <laughs> of course, he played Count Orlock in Shadow of the Empire, right? That's and right, so, full circle. Full, yeah, exactly. But he was also in, we, everyone thought he was going to play Count Orlock. Professor Alvin Eberhardt von Franz <laughs> <laughs> is my new drag name. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, I'm guessing this is um, Van Helsing. Yeah, I would assume. Yeah, and then Simon McBurney, who that is his hair knock, and Hell. Ralph Innocent. <gasps> From the Witch and Green Knight and Game of Thrones as Doctor Wilhelm Sievers. That I mean, I'm really interested to see this movie. Yeah, actually, it's gonna be great. Uh, a lot of these people he's worked with before, yeah. you know, and he makes good movies. Yeah. So 
Uh, finally, um, and sadly, we have to say RIP to Julian Sands, who was in Warlock way back in the late 80s. Um, and may have been in some of those Warlock sequels, but he passed away at the age of 65. And the details of his death seem pretty surprising. Like he was on some sort of hike? Yeah, he was like hiking in the mountains and he had been missing for days and they found his body. Yeah. So he is officially... Very strange. ...dead. So, um, but yeah, I really, really enjoyed Warlock when I was a kid. I watched it a lot. So, I've never seen it. Really? No. I I've really- seen Phantasm. You need to watch that too. Julian Sands was in a lot of movies that I liked as a kid, like Boxing Helena, right? Like these these weird movies that I was probably way too young to watch, but I just loved and watched all the time. So he'll be missed for sure. Coming soon. Well, we've got Bird Box Barcelona. God damn it. (laughs) Bird Box Barcelona. Don't you mean Barcelona? Well, if I say Barcelona, I have to say box. <laughs> Bird box Barcelona. My tongue can't do allegedly. Or. It has to do both. So Bird box Barcelona is coming out on Netflix in July. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a sequel to Bird Box with um, Sandra Bullock. <laughs> See, yeah, it looks just like the original Bird Box, just in Spain. What's new? Vampirism. <laughs> Barcelona. <laughs> Wrong comment. Save Eli. that <laughs> lyric for when they do Bird Box. <laughs> Buenos Aires. Argentina. <laughs> Buenos Aires. <laughs> Buenos Aires. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. This trailer looks like Bird Box. I don't, it doesn't seem like they're doing anything new or different. They're just showing what happened. I never saw the first one. So. At the same time. Everyone was a buzz. All of TikTok was a buzz. I mean, all of TikTok was a buzz. Or yeah. everybody. I mean, it was okay. Yeah, you were like, eh. And so I never saw it. Yeah, I mean, like, I didn't, I didn't like jump for joy about it. The thing is, and I, we were talking about this while we were watching the trailer earlier. Like, it came out around the same time as The Quiet Place, and The Quiet Place was a really, really good movie. Yeah, and it was very similar. And I was just like, I'd rather watch the one that's better. I thought they came out after that, like maybe like b- between Quiet Place and Quiet Place Two. It did. I mean, but it was still around the same time period. Okay. Enough for me to go like, I have already seen a movie like this. And wasn't and, there like yeah. another one kind of like that, like in the tall grass or something? Uh, and the tall grass was a Stephen King movie, but and that that was a shittacular fucking adaption. Yeah, was that the one where like the rain kills you or something? Or no, was that a different one? <laughs> I don't. They're all running together at this. Yeah. Point. Anyway, but I mean, like Bird Box Barcelona is just like people running around in the same like piece of raggedy cloth tied around their face. Yeah, but now there's a conspiracy. <laughs> That's right. There's like a human group that wants people to see. That's right. Um, I don't know the bird box. I, 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 the alien is what you said. I something? think I can't really remember. I mean, obviously, I didn't like. It was okay, but not okay enough for me to like. Like an alien or like a poltergeist. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, it's not a ghost. It's something otherworldly, but not like that. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, it's still, it's like just extra dimensional. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just like I, I can't because I, I will always choose A Quiet Place over Bird Box no matter what. And I know it's apparently like people's favorite book and things like that. I've never read the book. Yeah. I don't know. But between the two, one movie is great and one movie is greater. And I apologize to the one listener in Spain. <laughs> yeah. We, we, we apologize. <laughs> hey, I, was, I spent a lot of time watching Drag Race España. And I love it now. Every time they, I, I just love the fucking accent over there. I will go to Spain just to hear people talk like that to me. Wow. Um, so next up is the path, the passenger. <laughs> I can't get out of it. I feel like Carter Smith. <laughs> McCarter Smith. Who directed The Ruins and... Um, Something else recently that we saw, right? Yeah, we saw it at The Overlook the first year that we went. Butthole it's, Worm, whatever it was called. Yeah, it's called like... <laughs> snatched or something like that <laughs> i don't know i can't remember i liked the movie a lot but yeah it was just about like drug worms coming out of buttholes and i mean it was a good movie it's a good soundtrack <laughs> this movie looks like a film it certainly does <laughs> it certainly does look like a film um uh, <clears throat> it looks real um highfalutin does it i mean it I forget what it is. I, I guess it's the one. It looks like it's it's by Blumhouse, right? And so it looks like it's like Blumhouse is trying to be an Oscar winner 
but it's yeah. like thriller, but it's like alluding that something else is going on beyond just being a thriller. Well, I mean, obviously it's like, there's a guy who has, has some issues and he's like going on some murderous rampage. And instead of killing someone, he sort of takes him as a hostage and or a passenger or also like someone under his wing. Yeah. And he's like, you know, you, you're pathetic pretty much. And I'm going to change you. But there also seems to be some like homosexuality going on. Maybe. And that's what Carter Smith does. I mean, Carter Smith mm. is one of our most important horror gays. Right. Yeah. But um, it looks good. It's just like weird because it's only VOD is what it looks like in August. Yeah. I never even heard of this movie. His last movie was also VOD. And then they were like, for like it's going to be a VOD available for rent or buy. And then later on at some un- unintended date or whatever, it is going to be available on MGM plus. What the fuck is that? My, there's MGM another one. Plus. Yeah. Like, good luck guys. <sighs> I already have Paramount plus. I don't have time. And Paramount for plus one. just added, or what's it? Yeah. Paramount plus just added Showtime. Well, because like, they're raising their prices. In. Yeah. But so like, right now it's $99, right? Yeah. Here's our ad. So Paramount Plus is <laughs> is yours for only ninety nine dollars, but if you're already a part of that plan, you're going to get all of Showtime included. But the next time you sign up, might be a year from now, uh, it's going to be one hundred forty nine or whatever that the fuck. And then, uh, but if you just want to keep, I don't care about Showtime. I just want to keep my current. It's going to go down to forty nine dollars. Okay, from ninety nine. So it's going to be half cost for what we're currently getting. So I signed up for Showtime two years ago on Amazon and I forgot about it. So I've been paying for it all this time. Ooh. So now I'm going to cancel it and go back and watch all the shows that I should have well, watched. Before. Every time that there's something on Showtime, it's also on Amazon for like $2.99 to, to rent. And I'm like, yeah, fuck that. I'm just going to rent it. You know? Yeah. I mean, the only thing on Showtime I really want to watch is fucking Yellow Jackets. Yeah. So, I mean. Okay. But also, Gods and Monsters was streaming on Showtime, and that's I guess that's, I how, I, that's how I fucking watched it, because yeah. I had Showtime. Yeah. I also own the DVD, but I couldn't be bothered to pull it out. Yep, because it put me into Paramount Plus, and it was because it was like, yes, that's what that's what has it, or whatever, and didn't realize, it didn't tell me that it was for pay only, or whatever. Okay, well. So it was like, yours for only, you know, 99 a year for Showtime or something. In the meantime, while we have access, it is Paramount Plus that we watch everything on Showtime that we possibly can. <laughs> yeah, we just got access. It all just opened up to us like yesterday. It launched. opened up to us like a majestic butthole. I don't know. <laughs> sure. Anyway, Retribution, starring Liam Neeson, is in theaters in August. And this just looks like they're really trying to milk his fame from Taken again yeah. and again. And he again. has a very specific skill set. Yeah. And I'm just like, he has way more to do, guys. Like, come on. Does he, though, at this point? I think he just enjoys, like, showing up to work, getting a paycheck, and is I like... I guess so. He keeps saying yes. It looks like it could be good. It's like Car Bomb the movie or something, another thriller, you know? I mean, this makes me think back to when we watched Unhinged, because I poo-pooed that movie, like, all up With until... With Russell Crowe? Yeah, until, until I watched good. it. I know. But <clears throat> up until you watched it and said, it's good, watch it. And I'm like, it can't possibly be. And then I watched it, and I was like, oh my god, it's amazing. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess this could be the case, but I was not a fan of those Taken movies after the first one. Yeah, the first one's good. I watched the second one. I didn't watch the third one because I was like, at some point, this family needs to stop going out or something like that. <laughs> Everyone said that. That was a joke. <clears throat> I'm like, stop it. And so, like, another movie where his family's in peril. And I'm like, I just feel like I've seen this movie before. Yeah. And he shoots Matthew Modine, apparently. No, his car blows up. Whatever. Cars are blowing up left and right. Yeah. And retribution will be paid. Anyway, speaking of something no one asked for, Five Nights at Freddy's uh, just released a full trailer. And that's going to be on Peacock. As far as I can tell, only Peacock in October. Did you mean Cocktober? Cocktober. Mm-hmm. On Peacock. <laughs> oh, my God. Red yarn. Um, I feel like I've been asking for it. We've talked about this movie several times. If you, every time we have a shooting the Maybe flames. Maybe it looks scary, but it looks like an episode of Are You Afraid of the Dark? Yeah. And so in our, our last episode of Shooting the Flames, we talked about the teaser trailer they released. And I said, I wasn't going to watch a trailer. Right. And here we are. I watched the full trailer and now I don't want to watch the movie anymore. Well, it's like it's made for the people who loved it when they were kids playing it, you know, 10 years ago. Yeah. And it's like they're not kids anymore. No. Nor are we for quite some time. But like, I I don't know. Like this trailer. I, never, I played Slenderman like 10 years before that. 
<laughs> I mean, I liked Five Nights at Freddy's the game. I don't really play a lot of games, but that, that game scared me, so I kept playing it like over and over and over again. But uh, I guess that only came out like five or six years ago. And yeah, it's it's Slender Man that came out like 12 years ago. It's been a while. Yeah. But this trailer just looks abysmal. Yeah. And it's got PETA in it. It does. And Matthew Lillard. Right. Really? Yeah. He was the, the guy who hires him. Holy shit. He looked old. He, yeah, I know. Fuck. My well, God. we're going to see him coming this October for 13 Ghosts. <laughs> That's right. <gasps> oh, uh, then I'll watch Five Nights. I mean, I'm still going to watch this fucking movie. Maybe we could do a hot take. I don't know. In addition to the 13 episodes, we're going to do some films. Maybe on that, the November shooting the flames will come. Because we have to come full circle with this. We've talked about it yeah. at every step of the way. Anyway, look forward to Cocktober. <laughs> <laughs> we are. For us, not for them. <laughs> Lastly is Craven the Hunter, which yes. is a pseudo Marvel Sony thing done with uh aaron taylor johnson who looks almost unrecognizable fuck from me. his kick-ass days or even his quicksilver days or even his godzilla days yeah and is playing daddy and uh his dad is russell crow and it's in theaters in october <laughs> <laughs> he looks so good in this trailer he does this movie looks like a pile of shit but you know, I'm I'm just gonna put it on mute and watch it. I mean, I mean, I will. I'll go see this. Like watching the trailer, I was like, all right, I'm down for this because it looks really fucking violent. You know? Yeah, it doesn't look that bad. I'm I'll be, <clears throat> I'm mostly joking. I just don't like Craven the Hunter. I feel like it's like a second rate or third rate Spider Man villain that they're like just churning these things out because they have the property and it's like Sony, give it up. They really fucking need to at this point. You know, the Venom movies were like better than they deserved to be. I still haven't watched those. They're good. I want to. I wish they were R rated, but. Oh, they're, they're, they're not right up to the fucking edge. Yeah. Okay. I really want to watch the Venom movies, especially the sequel. I need to do that. It needs to be higher on my watch list. But I would go see this movie totally for multiple reasons. I'll stream it. You'll stream it, but it's not gonna be on Disney Plus. It's not. It's oh, that's Sony. right, because it's Sony. Fuck Disney Plus. <laughs> 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 Is that what it's called? Disney Plus. They're all plus at this point. Yeah. MGM plus, Paramount plus, Disney AMC plus. plus. <sighs> Pick a different plus, word. That. Yeah. It's all <laughs> Disney plus. Max. <laughs> Max. Max plus. <laughs> I still love that fucking meme where like HBO Max became Max. Your move, Peacock. I'm like, please just call it God. For real. Cocktober. It could be a whole thing. We've already <laughs> talked about this. We're giving this to you, NBC. Come on. Cock, please. <laughs> Cock, please. <laughs> <laughs>Well, guys, I think that about wraps up this episode of Shooting the Flames for July. As we kick off this month, we are going to do what we normally do in the summer, which is give you those blockbusters or what horror would consider as blockbusters. So this month, we're going to be covering The Ring and The Ring 2. And then over on Patreon, probably Ring Goo mm-hmm. or a poll. We'll see. We'll see yeah, what happens. We'll see what happens. Um, um, Patreon, please. Um, uh... <laughs> Film Flamers, please. <laughs> <laughs> make a new tier um, <laughs> as always we want to know what you think about this episode we love to read comments questions um, so guys find us on social media at the film flamers on twitter facebook or instagram you can email us at tired queens at filmflamers.com or call our hotline at 972 666 get into my bird box <laughs> It is Paramount Plus. That you do so immediately. That you do it right now. <laughs> My bird box. <laughs> oh my god. My bird box is waiting to be taken. <laughs> my bird box. Liam Nathan. <laughs> Liam Nathan. Just gonna give that bird box some retribution. You're gonna take it? <laughs> you gonna take this taken? <laughs> Like we said earlier, guys, we need some more reviews. So head over to Apple Podcasts or iTunes and leave us a five-star review. Tell us what you like it. We're going to read us in the next Shooting the Flames. And just in case the paradigm does shift to reality, rate us on Spotify. That's right. Hopefully they fix those broken links and things. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Robert, I think it's time that I uh, had some sweet dreams about Aaron Taylor Johnson. I'm certainly going to. I'll go off and swelter in the heat. 
and his. And have some sweet, sweet dreams? dreams? <laughs> Question mark. <laughs> I feel like when we watch that movie, if I have a beverage or two, I might just scream out. We swear we have to see it in the theater. So I'll be like, yes, daddy, yes! <laughs> Come through! <laughs>